It's time for video editing class at this 6th through 12th grade school on the south side of Chicago. Here, a room full of computers and a little bit of guidance set these students free to explore and experiment with digital media. This is not your typical classroom, and that's exactly the point. Every other industry, maybe, has changed dramatically in the last 10 to 20 years, but schools have been doing things the same way for the past 100, 120 years. As a teacher, Shane saw student after student disengage when it came to the traditional book report or essay, which is hardly the case now. That's because five years ago, this school teamed up with the Digital Youth Network for one dynamic after-school program. With help from the MacArthur Foundation, DYN hired a young staff students could relate to and bought all the latest and coolest equipment to bring learning to life. DYN encourages low-income students to develop skills that will help them get jobs in the future while helping them become technologically savvy in their daily lives. Many of our students come from homes where they are not connected to technology at home. Many of our students come from homes where their parents do not use technology either at home or at the workplace. And so they don't have that easy connection or that easy relationship to technology, to media. We believe that all of our children, despite their disadvantages, are extremely intelligent. There's so many things that students get out of their engagement with Digital Youth Network. First and foremost, they get ownership of their education. They have input to what they want to do. The next piece is that it recognizes different forms of their intelligence, right? In the old way of thinking, intelligence was the ability to read, write, or memorize facts, to, to multiply really quickly on a standardized test. But we recognize, of course, that intelligence is also, well, how do you fix a machine? How do you run a new digital program? How do you create a video game that represents lifelike activities? These are things that kids can do in DYN, can bring into the school day, and then can represent their understanding of a concept, skill, or topic. The program proved so effective that organizers wanted to share it with all Chicago youth. In October, the Harold Washington Library opened U Media, a space where kids can enjoy the academic environment of a library while using media that speaks their language. Not to mention, they can eat, jam out, and be as loud as they want to be. The people here around here, they're like, they're young, they really understand the teens. And then they show us all the great things we can do. It, it teaches me how to get acclimated with new technology. I don't know how rich everyone is. I can't necessarily afford a Mac, you know, in my, in my household and, you know, be able to play around with. So to give us that kind of access and that exposure is really beneficial to the teams. What started off as an after-school program has slowly made its way into the school day curriculum of several Chicago schools. When we opened up the U Media space, we said, well, why can't we imagine kids coming down to the library and to work on the research projects. We knew that they were going to work on the senior year thesis, and one of the things you need is access to resources, access to people, and actually access to the city of Chicago. So we said, well, let's bring the high school kids down here in the day from 9 to 12 and have them do their research project from here, where we can bring in the library staff to provide, you know, help them understand the resources, and we can bring in the digital youth mentors to teach them how to do the media skills. It's a great opportunity because, you know, most classrooms are small and kids have to stay in their seat. So here you bring in 50 kids and they can have they have the whole use of the space and they can work in small groups they can work in big groups they can work on the technology they can do what they need to do Shawnee Edmond has been a part of DYN since seventh grade I'm not the best writer per se like on paper but video gave me the chance to have an outlet and it just gave me a new voice rather than just writing because in school you always get these big writing projects and it's so much easier for me to express how I feel through a video, and it gave me a way to be successful in a totally different way. Personally, I grew up on technology. I don't know what I would do without my Mac. I am, my computer, I have it everywhere I go. On the, I sit there watching TV. It has to be two feet away from me. It, it can't be any further and take it everywhere. But uh, I just think that we grew up in different times and people learn in different ways. But what we're learning is essentially the same, just the way we're learning it is different. Most importantly, it's about changing people's minds. It's about the belief that change is possible in schools. And so that's probably the, been the largest challenge, 
is saying that this old way of doing things, the Betamax way of maybe doing things in, in essence, I guess, is that that way is okay and we don't have to throw it out completely, but there are so many new techniques that we can integrate and implement. Technology allows that to happen. It can connect people at a very low cost. It can open students up to different techniques. You can share ideas across classrooms, across schools, in real time. We might learn physics from an MIT class that's been recorded. We might observe an open heart surgery in process in a biology class. These are things that can happen, have happened, and now open up our students on 6420 South University to the rest of the world.